What's up everybody, moving on to another example. So let's say a swimming pool is 60 meters long. Jake swims from one end to the other in 20 seconds at a constant speed, rests for five seconds, and then swims back at a constant speed for 30 seconds. And we have to draw three graphs. We have to draw a distance versus time graph. We have to draw a distance from the start versus time graph. And then we have to draw a speed versus time graph. So let's start off with part A. We have a distance versus time graph. And distance versus time, that's a type of displacement versus time graph. So let's uh, go through the scenario one more time. So let's maybe draw a little uh, visual of what's happening. So he swims 60 meters at first in what? In 20 seconds. Then he rests for five seconds and then he swims back 60 meters again for 30 seconds. Okay, so he covers 60 meters in 20 seconds. So that means that he's going to swim 60 meters in 20 seconds. So that's about there. And he's starting at a distance of zero, right? At zero seconds. And it says that he is swimming at a constant speed. Now, if you remember a constant speed on a displacement versus time graph, that means that this is just going to be a straight line, right? So he covers a distance of 60 meters in 20 seconds. Okay, what is next? He rests for five seconds. Now, when he's resting, that means that he is not moving, right? And if he's not moving, then he's not covering any distance. There's no displacement going on. So up until 25 seconds, which is uh, about here, he's not covering any distance. So it's just a horizontal line. And a horizontal line on a displacement versus time graph, if you remember, means the object is not moving, its speed is zero, right? So that's how you represent him resting on a displacement versus time graph, on a distance versus time graph. Now. For part A, distance means just the total distance that he swam. It's not the distance from where he began. That's what we're going to do in part B. Just the total distance he's swimming. So, so far he swam 60 meters in 20 seconds, rested for 5 seconds. And now what he's going to do is he's going to swim another 60 meters for 30 seconds. Okay, so basically, in total, he's going to cover a distance of 120 meters. So we know that our graph is going to end at this 120 mark somewhere. However, what is the total time that's going to go by? Well, he has swam for 20 seconds, rested for 5, so we're now at 25 seconds from the beginning. And then he's going to take another 30 seconds to swim uh, the second length. So if we're at 25 seconds, another 30 seconds on top of that would be 55 seconds, which would be somewhere here on the graph. So we know at 55 seconds, he's going to cover a distance of 120. So I would say that's about there. And again, it's going to be at a constant speed. So it's just going to be a straight line to there. Right? So one more time, he swam 60 meters in 20 seconds, rest for 5 seconds, and then from that 25 second mark to that 55 second mark, he's going to swim another 60 meters, so he's going to cover a total distance of 120 meters. Now, notice how from this graph you can calculate a bunch of stuff. If they ask you to calculate maybe the average speed, right, for that first length, well, the first length is represented by this first line here. And to calculate the average speed, you would just basically find the slope of the secant. Slope of the secant in this case, because it's a constant speed, is just going to be the slope of this line. So basically, he covered 60 meters in 20 seconds. So he is traveling at 3 meters per second. That's going to be the slope of that line, 3. And then for this length, maybe they'll ask you to calculate the average speed. Well, he covered another 60 from 120, uh, from a distance of 60 meters to 120 meters. That's what, a distance of 60 meters again. And he covered that 
in 30 seconds. And that would be two meters per second. So the speed is slower for the second length. So that means that this, I, you might not see it on the diagram. Basically this line should be a little less steep than this line here, right? Cause this line has a higher speed. So it's more steep than this line. Perhaps you can't see it in the diagram as well. And that's my fault, but this line should be a little less steep than this line because the speed is lower. Now let's move on. Draw distance from the start versus time graph. And what I mean distance from start is basically the distance from where he initially starts his swim. So at the beginning of the pool. Okay, so on that first length of the pool, again, he does 60 meters and 20 seconds. So his distance from the start at the end of that first swim is going to be 60 meters. Right, and that's going to happen at 20 seconds. So just like the distance versus time graph, that part is going to be the same. So basically at 20 seconds, he's 60 meters away from where he started. And then what's happening is he's going to rest for five seconds. So again, from 20 to 25 seconds, he's still 60 meters away from where he started. But now what's going to happen as he swims back? Well, as he swims back, basically the distance to where he started is going to start decreasing. He's going towards where he started. So that swim is going to take 30 seconds. So from 25 seconds to 55 seconds, he's basically decreasing his distance to where he started. And then at 55 seconds, he's going to arrive where he started. So the distance from the start is going to be zero. Okay, so notice how this is a different type of graph than the distance versus time graph. It's a different kind of displacement we're talking about. The first graph was the total distance that he swam, right? So the total distance he swam was 120 meters, 60 and 60. But this graph, we are graphing his distance from where he started. That's what we are representing the displacement as. So he's going to swim away from where he starts and he's going to be 60 meters away at 25 seconds. He's going to rest for five seconds. So he's still going to be 60 meters away from where he started up until the 25 second mark. And then when he starts swimming back, the distance from where he started is going to start decreasing until he comes back to where he started. And notice how these are all straight lines because again, this is all happening at a constant speed. So this is your distance from start versus time graph. Notice the difference between this one and the distance first time graph in part A. And finally, moving on to part C, in my opinion, the trickiest part of this question, we have to draw a speed versus time graph. Okay, so if you remember in part A, we calculated what the speed was for both of the swims. So for the first length, what was the speed? It was a constant speed and he swam 60 meters in 20 seconds. So he swam at three meters per second and that was a constant speed throughout that first length. And then the second length, What was the speed? He swam 60 meters again, but in 30 seconds. So the second length he swam at two meters per second. That was a constant speed as well. So let's split the speed versus time graph into three parts, right? So the first part is going to be his first length. And that took what? 20 seconds. And then he rested for five seconds. So that would take us to 25. And then he swam back for 30 seconds. So that would take us to 55 seconds. So we have three parts to this speed versus time graph. Okay, so this first part, he was swimming at a constant rate of three meters per second. And how does a speed versus time graph look like when the speed is constant? Well, if you remember, 
let's say this is one meters per second, two meters per second, three meters per second. If you remember, a constant speed on a speed versus time graph is just basically a horizontal line, right? So he maintains, uh, also somewhere to there, Right, so he maintains a constant speed of three meters per second for the first 20 seconds. So that's how the speed versus time graph is gonna look like for that first portion. Okay, and what's gonna happen? He's swimming at three meters per second and then he's just gonna get to the wall. So his speed is going to drop down right away at 20 seconds to zero. Right, because when he's resting, he's not moving. And if you remember, when an object is not moving, that means that its speed is zero. So its speed is gonna be zero from 20 to 25 seconds. But then what's gonna happen is he's gonna start swimming again, but for the second length, he's maintaining a speed of two meters per second. So right away, at the 25 second mark, he, he gets to two meters per second, a speed right away in a split second. And he maintains that speed until the end. And then he's swimming and then he gets to the wall and his speed drops down again to zero because he's basically finished the swim. Okay, so that's how the speed versus time graph looks like. Now, a lot of times textbooks or certain teachers won't even have you input these parts here, these sort of like vertical lines, right? They'll just kind of show it in these sort of, it'll be like a step graph. You could do it that way as well. So basically he's swimming at three meters per second, boom, hits the wall, and now he's at zero meters per second. So he's resting for five seconds. Then for a second length, the speed is two meters per second, and it's a constant speed, so it's just a straight line for that third part of the graph. So some graphs will have these horizontal lines, some won't, but, uh, if I was a teacher, I was marking, and you put either graph, I would mark them both correctly. But you get what I'm saying. You see the difference between the speed versus time graph and the displacement versus time graph, right? Because these are all constant speeds, speed versus time graph is just going to be horizontal lines. Yo, what's up, guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully, you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also, check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.